Hello everyone, and welcome back to X4, where I continue the tutorials. I'm halfway through the intermediate tutorials, and we're Tired getting... of waiting up, the shadows. Up, up, up. It to... keeps trying to say things when I have my... Tired of waiting oh, the shadows. Okay, okay, no, we'll where just go, you... we'll just go. I don't want them to talk to me. All right, trading. Michael Collins, one of my favorite astronauts. Go places and do things that have never been done before. Oh, I had a little bit of a glitchiness there. Let's trade. Open the map. Okay. I have the map open. I have the map open. Okay. Okay, so far the tutorials have been going pretty good. Uh, it's supposed to tell me something, right? Told me to open the map menu, yeah. Uh oh. Have I encountered an issue? No. Tutorial trading, yes. Oh well, maybe I should open briefing. Learn the basics. Open map, yeah. Well, it's active. It's active. This is map view. Hmm. Okay. Well, let let's try a different tutorial then. Mining. That seems important. Today's lesson is about mining. It was about trading. To do it properly, you need a specialized mining ship, like the one you're flying right now. They're the only ones with the right cargo bay for storing raw chunks. You'll also want a mining laser. Okay. To start, turn on your ship's scan mode. Okay, scan mode. The asteroids that around is you very are now neon. colored according to what's inside them. If they're not empty, they usually contain ore, silicon, or ice. Rarely, you'll find nevidium, but good luck finding a buyer. Select an asteroid that's not empty to see its mineral yield. Um, select an... I guess I click on him. Now approach it. Ore. Ore is boring though. But they're all ore. That one has a lot of ore. Oh, no, it's stuck on this one. There are basically two ways to get at the minerals. Either you nope. just keep blasting the asteroid until it completely breaks apart. Or you do what I prefer. Look for rich veins and target them directly. I'll mark one for you now. Ah. Shoot it. What's that one? Uh, it's a rotating asteroid. And the vein is on the opposite side right now. See how quickly it released the minerals? Fly over them to collect them. You can also use the container magnet to pull them in. No, that's that. Oh, there, there, that's zooming in. Not only does this go a whole lot faster, you also actually get more out of each asteroid. I want more chunks. Oh, it didn't let me. Well, let's go back to trading and see if it worked now. Let's trade. No, I was afraid you're gonna say Open that. The map. Nope. Nope. This one is this one's a problem. Okay, forget it. Next orders. Today we'll go over how to properly set up orders. Open the map. Select the scout ship. Which which one? Okay, that now, one. Now interact anywhere inside the marked area and select fly and wait. Fly and wait. Your scout ship will fly to this position. You can give several orders in a row, which will be executed in the order they're given. Add a second fly and wait order anywhere you like. 
You can move some orders around by dragging the order icon. You can even Try. drag them. That's impressive, actually. Guess we have to drag it over there. Oh, the active one. It wants the active one dragged over there. You can also quickly insert waypoints between orders. Useful for navigating around hazards, for example. Do so now. Select the scout ship. No, I did select the scout ship. Left click and drag an order line to add a fly to order or... Uh, Okay, it's also like possible that. to change the elevation of an order location. Try it. Um, hold the right mouse button and drag to rotate. Mm. All right. You can interact with an order or the line leading to it and remove it from the context menu. Do so now. Okay, right click, remove this order. If you remove the active order, then the next one in the queue will be executed right away. If you remove the last queued order, then the ship falls back to its default behavior. Do so now. Okay, well. Let's change that default behavior. Okay. Open the scout ship's info menu. Information. Not this one? Oh, this one. No, nope, this one. Select oh, you want me to click tab. this. Select the scout ship. At the bottom, you can see its current default behavior. Click on it and select revisit known stations. Look at all this stuff. Select the scout ship. No, no, we already have the scout ship. You need to tell ship. it the space to work in. Select the empty field and then click anywhere in the current sector. Select the scout ship. Stop you telling me to select the, the scout ship. At the default value or reduce it for a narrower operating area. No, it's fine. Now, the most important part. Select I did it already. Uh oh, it might cause a problem. I jumped ahead. Behavior. Select the scout ship. You can still give this ship any other Okay, order maybe you it's like. okay. Once those are completed, it will return here and revisit all known stations. Take your time looking around. Close the map when you're done. Okay, right. I'll take that. All right. Gosh, there's a lot of stuff in this game. Because you can control lots and lots and lots of ships, so you can give orders to all of them separately. Let's scale up our trading. Open the map. I've given you access to a medium-sized trade ship and several stations to trade with. It's getting difficult to match sell offers with buy offers with this much going on. Luckily, you have several options to filter trades. The simplest one is to only look at specific wares. There are several ways you can select a ware that you're interested in. By clicking on a trade offer, by typing its name in the text bar in the top right corner, or by manually selecting it in the filter settings menu for trade filters. Let's open that one. Not only can you add or remove wares here, there are other useful filter options as well. For example, we're only interested in container wares, as that is what your ships can carry. So disable the other transport types. I also like to set a minimum volume and increase the display trade offers to five, but that's just personal preference. It looks like energy cells were in short supply everywhere. That means the buying price is very high. Set a filter for this wear. I prefer to click on the trade offer directly, but you can do it however you want. Let's make your transport ships start trading those. Select it. Now, give it an order to trade with the power plant. Uh, so that that's the power plant. So trade with, okay, like that. Select the energy cells to buy, just like you did for your own ship. Don't forget to confirm. 
Now select any station that wants to buy energy cells and repeat this process. So it's going over there to buy them. And here at the ore refinery. Hello. Hello. Oh god, somebody just said hello. Okay, um here. We can sell the energy cells. It doesn't want to take two of them. No, it's only taking two of them. So no, cancel. It's only taking 400. No, I want some place that's going to take all of them. That's better. There, your transporter is on its way. Hope that was right. You'll get paid once the cell order has been completed. Let's take a closer look at one specific station. Select the one that's highlighted. You can see that some of its trade offers have an icon next to them. This one means that they are construction trade offers. The station is going to use these wares to build modules, not to produce something. This might be useful to know if you don't just want to make money, but do want to accelerate the build process, for example. There are also supply trade offers, which are for wares required to restock things like drones. Let's move on to auto trade orders. They make a ship find and execute trade runs on its own. Open the Mark Trade Ships behavior menu. The what? Trade ships. Oh, okay. No, there it is. Marked trade ships behavior menu. Okay. Yeah, you. Where was your behavior menu? Oh, there. I can't click on it. Oh, well, no, that's not for the ship. You ah, there we go. Now I can click. Now on. change its default behavior to local auto trade. Local auto trade. Open the highlighted menu. Select any of the wares. Just say energy cells. Next, you need to tell it the space to work in. Select the empty field and then click anywhere in the current sector. Don't forget to confirm. The pilot will now look for trade runs within the system without needing any more input from you. Fancy. You'll make much more if it works. If you manage them at least a bit. In my experience, take your time looking around. Close the map when you're done. So the little ship is... It says zero energy cells right now. Did it really buy the energy cells? Well, what is inside of it? Well, it says 8,200 energy cells. No, that's remaining cargo after orders. So it did pick up the energy cells, and it's heading to that engine part factory to sell it. Well, darn it, I want to see it sell the energy cells. Right now, I've got 18,000 credits, it said, in the upper, upper corner, but 180,400 due from trades. So it's telling me that I'm expecting 180,000 credits from this trade already. It's there. It's presumably trying to fly around and dock and everything. There I go. I got the money. Alright. Pretty satisfactory. Okay. It should automatically trade now. And yeah, I mean I could go out and fly and everything, but it wants to throw me out because I need to get on with things. It's no longer tutorial time. Mining orders. Now, let's scale up this mining operation. Open the map. The different colored areas indicate the presence of resources. Red areas contain solid resources. Blue areas contain gases. Purple areas contain both. 
I'm passing control of another mining ship to you. It's a gas miner. It harvests from gas regions, not asteroids. Select it, then order it to mine any resource in the blue colored area. Mine. Helium, hydrogen, or methane? What do we want? Methane? It will now mine that resource until its hold is full. You can also change its default behavior to local auto mine. The pilot skill isn't high enough yet for more advanced orders. They have pilot skills that determine trying to sell what kind of orders they can take. Sector. The more advanced ones require a more experienced pilot, but allow it to operate within a range of systems. The final thing you need to know is how to use resource probes. When deployed, the density of nearby resources will be shown on the map. They also provide information to your miners, which makes them work faster. Place one near where your gas miner is working. Um. Okay, how do I do that? Uh, I guess I have to close the menu. All right. That's the gas miner, I suppose. Maybe I should target that area. Oh, I guess I don't know if I can target. I'll just follow it. This is probably close enough. Deploy resource probe. You can now see an overview of the resources within the probe's range. Each resource shows a rating. The higher it is, the Probably faster it can be gathered. Probably I should The bar to the right shows how depleted it Oop. is. Resources replenish over time, but when a field is just about empty, you're probably better off finding an alternative in the meantime. And that's basically it. Close the map when you're done. Ah, <sighs> resource mining. <laughs> yeah, another little mechanic in this thing. So many things. Can I remember it all? I have no idea. The tough part is deciding what's really going to be lucrative and one what's just a waste of time, though. I mean, is collecting all these gases going to be useful or valuable? Your ship sensors are all That's well tough. good, but sometimes it can be useful to get a more direct look at things. First, look around your cockpit. There Run are many pad. different kinds, but ship cockpits often provide a wide field of view outside the ship. You could also look at your ship from the outside with the magic of camera drones. Try it. Magic Fly of camera drones. To get a feel for how it behaves. Mm. This numpad Try also works here. Now. Yeah. Very simple sort of ship, uh, ship uh, thing. Oh, I need to change the little icon. That's the default one. The this also works on man. targets within range. Magic, magical drones. Select the nearby ship. Select the nearby ship. Oh, doop. Now activate external target view. Okay, this is the The target. camera controls work just like in the other external view. Try them if you'd like. Well, this really is magic. How did we get a drone over there? You can even tell a camera drone to stay in a fixed location. Try this now. The controls here behave a little differently. Play around with them now. Return to cockpit view to move on. Yeah, I probably won't use that one much. If you'd like to see what's in front of you with fewer obstructions, you can even make the cockpit practically invisible to you. Is there anything camera drones can't do? <laughs> Try it now. Okay, that's how you hide the cockpit thing. You can even get a live stream of various places around the galaxy. Do so now. This mode automatically cycles between objects you have access to. This crazy it stuff. It starts out with your personal channel, which cycles through the objects you own. 
Since you only own this one ship at the moment, it's not very exciting yet. I've unlocked another faction's channel as well. You'll get access to these as you increase your rank with that faction. Switch you can either lower. wait for the channel to automatically switch, or use the controls in the top right of the screen to do so yourself. With these controls, you can also lock a channel or object to keep the mode from switching. Feel free to stay in this mode for as long as you'd like. Return to cockpit view to end this lesson. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. It's okay. Got it. Moving right along. Long range scanning. Let's take a look at your scanners. First, there's the Gravitar. It's always on and passively detects objects around you. There are ship modifications and some regions that affect this, but the usual range is around 40 kilometers. Let's learn about the long range scanner. Okay. It's a mode you need to activate manually. Do so now. All bright again. This scanner works by sending out a charged wave of particles. The longer you charge, the higher the range. Okay, I can't but wait that long. But if you overcharge it, you need to start over. No Don't overcharging. Worry, it won't damage anything. Try it. I, okay, I did it. Good one. You've got a result. Eek. Fly towards it. I recommend using travel mode. The maximum range of this scanner is around 200 kilometers, so this thing could be pretty far off. The long range scanner is directional, by the way. Only certain massive objects like stations and jump gates can be detected all around you. I recommend switching back to the long range scanner from time to time and sending another pulse to reorientate yourself. There's our target. Oh, where's our target? It's a lockbox. Most of these are stashes that were abandoned for one reason or another. There's no telling what's inside, know. so be careful, Winnow. And be sure to double check whether you have picked up anything illegal. Where's I the lockbox? I promise this one's fine, though. Shoot all of the locks to open it while taking care not to damage the box itself. I don't even know where it is. Where is it? <laughs> okay, well, it says destroy and... Ah. Uh... Oh, there it is. I don't trust lock boxes. Spinning lock box, spinning lock box. Yeah, better not to find them. You have to shoot off the locks. And I'm like, this is not good. Can you just target the locks? And then you, you can destroy it if you miss and such. Mm. Ah, uh, see. You can shoot them off in EVA, but sometimes the lock boxes are like booby trapped and everything. Object scanning. There's a ship ahead of you. Let's scan it. Activate the object scan mode. Purple. It's purple. Now interact with the ship and select the scan option. Keep the ship near your crosshair. There you go. The ship has been scanned. You can now see the cargo it's carrying, for example. Some ships, especially military, are more hardened against scans. You'll need to buy a better scanner, or even get up close in your spacesuit. This scan mode can also display minerals and asteroids, but that will be covered in another lesson. 
Let's move on for now. I think we redid that, right? Approach the station. Your heads-up display has overlaid a filter onto the modules. Pick any module and approach it. Yes, Try this one. to have it in your view, too. There we go, it's scanned. Keep scanning modules until you fully scan the entire station. Okay, that, that just got scanned, I guess. If they're funny colored, they got scanned. So there's one more module somewhere. This module is hardened against scans and requires a better scanner than any ship can carry. You need to scan it from your spacesuit. Oh no. Weird that the spacesuit has a better scanner than the ship, but okay. Get up. Quasar Vanguard. So the suits do have Newtonian physics, sort of, except for rotation. Translation, they keep drifting off. Oh, I cut that short. I thought I was going to have to come back into the ship, but I just cut it short right there. Okay. Signal leaks. Look right below your cross here. You can see a few moving bars there. They indicate that there is some kind of signal leak nearby. Finding those is a lot easier when scan mode is active. Try to do so on your own first. I'll mark it in a little bit. Scanner mode. Oh, maybe that? Wait. I'm pretty sure it's that thing. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's that one. To scan these, you need to get really close and keep them centered in your crosshair for Oop. a few seconds. Oh, good. Pixels. Your computer was able to extract some information from it. The type of information can vary a lot, and sometimes I hope I don't have to do a whole lot of that. You a mission on the download. Secret Most missions. Most of the time, you'll find something that you can use to negotiate a better deal for a specific resource or product at the station. Try to scan another leak. Your ship scanner isn't enough to unlock this. Oh, no, not again. You need to get really close using your spacesuit. Do so now. Quasar Vanguard. Scanning still works the same way here. Try it. Do I have to activate scan mode though? Ah! Uh, oh! Did I go through? Uh oh. Oh, no. Okay, scan mode? Okay, I guess oh, so. You lost it. Try again. Pretty freaking close. I'm in purple mode. I don't know which cursor it wants on it, but I've moved both of them at some point or another. Oh, man, I have to get close. Good. You may and also I go inside, be able to find sort of. To repair these before anyone can exploit them. Go and repair the marked one now. Best turn off scan mode so that you don't accidentally scan it. What's wrong with accidentally scanning it? Oh, 
Well, we're clipping inside and seeing it, but we do collide with it, I guess. Oh no, momentum. Okay. There we it go. disappeared. No. These leaks are usually just a product of wear and tear. Um, back but sometimes down to criminals use handcrafted EMP bombs to create them. EMP bombs. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but at least try not to get caught doing anything shady. All right. Seems like there's a lot of shady things with these signal leaks. Okay, that leaves the flight assist, fly adaptive you steering, you station want, building, and station it. management. I'm going to throw in the flight Tired assist here. The and we were going to talk about the station building and station management separately, I think. Please turn off flight assistance now. Control spacebar. I'll is off. give you time to play around with it. Re-enable flight assistance when you want to move on to the next step. Okay, what am I supposed to play around with? Seem to be going backwards. So this is more momentum based, sort of, but still rotation isn't. So it's more inertial, but not completely inertial. The next part is technically against the rules, so um, you didn't hear it from me. We'll combine two of the things you've learned, aimed at empty space and activate travel mode. Aim at empty space. Build up some speed. Okay. Now, turn off flight assist. Yeah. Your speed is no longer increasing. More importantly though, your ship is very maneuverable again. It takes a practice, but you can use this for significant course corrections during travel mode. Try this now by aligning to the new objective, then re-enabling flight assistance. Okay, turn it back on. I find it really fun to drift my way to jump gates at high speed that way, but do be That careful. was hundreds of meters per second in a second. I don't want to hear about you turning your ship into a pancake. I right? got turned into mush right. right there. Now that the exciting part is over, let's wind down with something a bit calmer. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it's illegal so much as it's dangerous. Okay, though, I think that's enough to digest for now. Adaptive steering, station building, station management, and combat scenario I'll save for another time. But okay, that's a little taste of X4. So with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.